What's up and welcome back. I'm John Stark from MacMovieGuy.com, your favorite blind film critic. And today, we're going to talk about this week's episode of Only Murders in the Building, Season 4, Episode 5. Oh yeah, uh, I laughed my ass off uh, numerous times in this episode. I thought this episode was hilarious. Uh, there were so many times where just little jokes came out, and I was like, I'm here for that. Uh, just right off the bat, I loved when, because uh, we pick up where we left off, and uh, I should say this is on Hulu, what's up my blind audience, I'm wearing my black baseball cap, and I've got, I think it's a Mandalorian shirt, I'm pretty sure it's my Mandalorian shirt on. Um, so... This is, yeah, when, uh, what, 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 uh, Mel, is that her name? Mel, uh, played, uh, played Molly Shannon's character. Uh, when she, uh, she's in the, the place, the, the Zaz, Zaz Academy. Uh, Zaz Mentas. Anyway, uh, yeah. And she's got the gun, that's where we left off. And we pick up right where, basically right from there except we have a little bit of a monologue from the writer for like from his perspective which i thought was interesting to start with that because we also didn't know where he was like contextually in terms of the story so uh from his perspective i thought it was really interesting how we were gonna hear more from him uh, it kind of brings him in as a character too as a is it this guy maybe he did it um, but Mel is the, the film's producer, uh, it says that she got a call from Zaz saying there was a problem with the film and to meet her and, um, it still feels, the, the whole thing still felt sketchy to me because, uh, they, like, she's just hanging out in this facility by herself at the right time. She's just a film producer, like, uh... It's weird. Like, the thing just didn't... It didn't feel right to me, her scene. Uh, do I think Molly Shannon's the killer? Probably not, because last time it was the producer. So, I don't... I think she's probably the safest bet, because I would be, like, repeating last season's storyline. So, would be for it to be the exact same uh, position in terms of role. Like, last season, we were putting on a play that had a producer it was the producer so if this time it's the movie but it's also the producer i just think that that's i think she's probably the least likely character but i just her thing was just she just felt sketchy like the whole thing uh, there could be like more to it but i just don't think uh, i would put her at the like least likely uh to be the killer list because of what like what i said if you look at the past couple seasons they would sort of change up who the character is and, like, in relation to the world in which these characters live in and the story. So, um, not on my radar. Uh, yeah, we do have, um, the, the little bit of conversation and then we jump and we're back sort of at the apartment and there's going to be like a photo shoot and uh, all of these jokes landed i, I loved uh, all the jokes but i did love when she sh shot up the, the i was gonna, i should have mentioned the shooting at the ceiling thing uh, this gun's not loaded and she fires like eight shots into the ceiling <laughs> just like i was like all right uh and so go miss it's like yeah i'm just gonna i'm just gonna take that i'm gonna take, I'm just gonna take that gun away from you um, probably safe. Uh, I love the gun wasn't even hers, so she couldn't even really, like, commit to the idea. She She's like, oh, I found it. And it's like, then how did you know it wasn't loaded? You know what I mean? Like, how would you, did you just assume it wasn't loaded? Like, very weird. Um, but uh, I did love so much about this episode. I loved uh, all the stuff with Martin Short and how uh he, his reaction to like everything anytime they say anything about his character it's like his character was so degraded the whole episode and he just gets deflated 
every like five seconds like oh but here's the best line about the singing in the rain two for vh1 with gary Busey, and i was like oh my god i want to see that so bad <laughs> like i i want the i want episode six to be singing in the rain two with gary Busey. <laughs> Like, I just, I want footage from that. Now I want it to be real. Like, I feel like he says, I feel like Oliver says so many things. It's one of the things Zach Galifianakis' uh, version of himself jokes about. And is that he's like, oh, you just say these stories and you come up with this and this and, and, and this. And and that whole thing where they're trying to develop Zach Galifianakis into Oliver. Um, it's one of those things where it's like, is it true? Because I really want it to be true. I really want it to be true that in this world that there's a Singing in the Rain 2 that stars Gary Busey and was a VH1 original in the 80s. Like, that is... That feels like you, you hit some sort of, like, weird Mad Libs, like, trifecta. Like, movie title, actor, network, bam, 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 you know? Um, but, uh, I, I, I don't know, I just, I just adored that. So, everybody's back, uh, Eva Longoria, um, I loved her line, her Desperate Housewives line is hilarious. I died. Uh, <laughs> she's like, yeah, I do these things and uh, they tried to make me do season eight of Desperate Housewives. And I said, not until gay marriage. And then... Look what, look what we got. Gay marriage. So, thank you, gays. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, her character is... Her, this version of Eva Longoria is... I'm living for, <laughs> for her. It's perfection. Um, so, yeah, all of the... Uh, Eugene and Zach also pop up. Zach lets Oliver know that the writer has manipulated the character to make him even worse than he was before Oliver sort of had problems with the script and was like, why am I written like, uh, you know, it, something about like Peter Pan slash Tinkerbell. Like he was sort of both like flits around like Peter Pan or Tinkerbell. And he's like, those are two different things. Pick one. Um, and then, so he just went through and added insecure in front of Oliver's name a lot. So, which of course is not going to make him more secure. Um, we've got Glenn is back. Paul Rudd gets to be in a second episode this season. So that's fun. Uh, I kind of put him on my radar in terms of potential killer list. I thought he was just going to be a gag, but now that he's a real character, I'm like, oh, could it have been him? I don't know why it would have been him, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know why it would have been Glenn because... I guess there's a tie to Zaz, uh, but, and there's also that suggestion that Charles was the main shooter, and it's possible he was going to try to off the Only Murders trio for Ben's death, and maybe, like, this is a revenge thing, but, because uh, they were talking, there was this huge conversation that they have about the 12 minutes, about the timeline, and, um, how they could have, and it's funny that Martin Short tries to do it, that Oliver tries to do it or whatever, and he's like, I couldn't, I, couldn't, I did things, and you know, he's like out of breath, and uh, he's like, you're right, you can't, yeah. and uh, yeah, I was thinking about that, when you, I didn't realize it was like a 12 minute time window we were working with, but it does seem like a lot to achieve in 12 minutes, so then they come to the conclusion it had to be two people, which, of course, brought my mind to, well, if it was two people, who would it be? Because it obviously has to be those people, because there's a character that, that there are two sisters, uh, brother-sisters, or whatever. I think that's their name. Anyway, um, so, yeah, this is... It points to them, and then it ends with this gunshot with one of them missing. Like, they can't find the other one, the twin, the twin directors. And uh, I feel like it's too leading, because we're, we're just at episode five. So, um, 
I'm kind of thinking about like the other killer reveals and I feel like everybody else uh they did a really good job of stretching out the reveal until the end so you weren't immediately like oh well it's definitely that character for like five episodes leading up to the end um and they just sort of gave you a lot of places to look a lot of different angles i think my most interesting suggestion as to who it might be is howard uh i think there's something to be said for apparently no one else lives in this building anymore except howard he's the only person that they've retained from the original when you think about like only murders in the building and all the people that lived in the building and all the different neighbors um and now we get all the way down to season four and the one character who's prominently all over the place is Howard. But he's not part of the trio. He's just everywhere. And I'm kind of wondering, is it possible that he has a grudge that he's not part of, you know, that he's been a part of this whole thing. And yet he's getting, he keeps getting increasingly angrier that he's not a part of the thing. Like he keeps trying to interject himself into, and you see him in this episode where he's like, I'm not a PA, I'm a documentarian slash talent liaison or something like that like he's he gives himself a reason to be there but he also has given himself to be there in like every other episode which to be fair he was in season three but he always he's like the fourth character he's not really recognized as being an integral part to the cast but yeah he's been around since the beginning so I kind of wonder if it's not him snapping. But I don't know who he would snap with because I don't know that Howard could achieve it. The thing about Howard, though, is that Howard, as we were told in the first episode with uh, the return of Amy Ryan's character, uh, she remembered all the passageways. And it's like, well, if she remembers the passageways and how to use them, she used it to even, like, not just to, like, get in the building, but to, like, get into Charles, you know. She got the whole way through. And it's like, I wonder if Howard had used the passageways, could he have achieved 12 minutes? You know, they assume that he, that they went, like, the normal way, or they went, like, the way that anybody else would have had to go. But what if they took the passageways? Could it, could it be Howard? Because he would know how to use passageways. So I'm still not giving up on my, I think it's Howard, because he has such an increase in screen time uh, that I'm just kind of, and it really does kind of feel like no one else lives in the building anymore. I mean, like you have the Westies, but there were other people that lived in their building, like that were more prominently featured in the first and second season, and they just kind of vanished I mean, some died, but because they were murdered in the building. But there were more of them. <laughs> like, it is uh, now you're like, this is a whole building that has what Charles, Oliver, Mabel, and Howard, and they're doing like live photo shoots, and where and no one else wants to come out and be like, hi, I still live here. You know, like I find that really hard to believe. So, yeah, it's it is kind of interesting and odd. Um, but that's what I got. That's my, as my suggestion is Howard, because I think the sister's brother thing is too obvious because that was immediately where my mind, mind went to. I didn't even need the reveal, like the, the, the realization from the, the group as they look and they're looking at the boots and they're like, oh my God, the boots. And they, they were like, oh, well they could have. And, and like, they're imagining the whole thing in their head and it's like, Yeah absolutely you could have i agree uh i see it but at the same time i also see it on episode five and we have more episodes to go uh do i think the writer did it I, again I, I don't know i it just he's he's odd he seemed really like honored to be part of the conversation and the thing that i noticed is that he if it is him, it would be weird for it to be him because his script is so complimentary of Charles and not Oliver. And he was obviously aiming at Charles's apartment. So he was, whoever the killer was, was either trying to kill Zaz or Charles. 
And the writer seems to not like Oliver more than Charles. So he seems to be a fan of Charles. So why would he go after Charles or Zaz? Uh, that would be the question that I would have that I don't have the answer to. And not Oliver. Like, I would feel like if he was going to off one of the one of the main characters, it would have been a, an assassination attempt on Oliver from that guy. So that's where we're headed. I'm still, I'm still thinking about Glenn because I think it's interesting that Paul Rudd has been in another episode. Uh, I thought his thing was just going to be a gag, like a one-off, like a, oh, look, look, I'm here doing it. Cool. Uh, I still don't think it's any of the doubles because they're technically playing versions of themselves. And you have to come up with a real stretch to find a reason why Zach Galifianakis would want, <laughs> you know, would want to kill... <laughs> Some podcasters, <laughs> the star of The Hangover, because we're like in this universe, he's gonna have all of the background that he has in the real world. So, like, it doesn't make any sense for Zach, Eva, or uh, um, Eugene to be uh, any of the killers. So, it just doesn't make any sense. And, like, like I said, I don't think it's Molly because I don't think it's the producer because the producer two seasons in a row feels uh underwhelming it's like well you went there twice i i just think this the show is better written than that and i give him more credit than that so i think the biggest reveal and the biggest twist would be howard uh because he's i don't think people are suspecting him because he's been in four seasons now and he hasn't killed anybody yet so what would have driven him to kill and that is the interesting question uh is i think that he's tired of being the fourth wheel in this and they're highlighting him more as a fourth wheel by not having anybody else in the building. Like, no one else lives here but Howard. Uh, so, yeah, that was my thought. But I love this episode. I thought it was funny. I'm going to give it an A. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll see you guys on the other side.